So the Pan American Cruiser line is quickly becoming one of my favorites in the entire game. I'm having a ton of fun playing these ships. This tier 10 is absolutely amazing to play. We have a bunch of utility, not quite as much as the Worcester. Uh, that is one of the reasons that I still enjoy playing Worcester. Having HE in that radar is much better against destroyers than this armor piercing. But this heal, having this amazing super heal combined with these combat instructions, which again allow us to get back to that super heal very, very quickly, means this is a light cruiser that can brawl it out a little bit. And that is always going to be enjoyable for me. Close range engagements are always going to be my favorite part of this game. It's much more interesting to me than sniping games or sitting at the back of the map, not really being able to get into the thick of things. And Having a light cruiser line that allows me to play aggressively is really, really nice. Of course, we're going to take a lot of damage. It's a light cruiser still. We don't have a lot of armor. But with this heal, we're actually able to retain a lot of our HP, even if we're taking citadels. That's the crazy part here. It's a light cruiser that doesn't care as much about taking citadels. And unlike a ship like Minotaur, where, sure, you can take citadel damage and heal it back in Minotaur, you have a gigantic citadel, so it's really likely that the enemy is going to actually death strike you. I haven't really found that to be an issue with the San Martin, especially when I can angle a little bit. We don't have a stepped citadel like the Minotaur does, where even at an angle, you're liable to get dev struck. Uh, this ship is very, very strong, very difficult to kill, and is very, very fun to push up very close to islands like this. And on this map in particular, we all know how important this channel is. This is one of the major choke points on this map. And if you allow the enemy team to pass through here, you're not going to have a good time. It's really, really bad. Um, you have to stall them out or kill them as they're coming through if they decide to push it. Otherwise, your team gets locked into a massive crossfire down towards the B cap or the A cap. Depending on which side you spawned at, you're quickly going to lose most map control that way. The decap definitely going to go down, and it's going to be very, very difficult to even defend or contest the C-cap from there. So, we have to stall them out here, and well, we're the only ones left here, really. Uh, there is a Minotaur, of course, but actually being able to fight for this channel, it's basically us until the Minotaur comes back. So, the enemy looks like they have a destroyer in the cap at this point. We're going to poke out just a little bit trying to use this island to prevent uh, battleship fire, but I do want to get some good damage in on this DD. The AP doing very good work there. We don't have short fuses though, that's kind of the issue against destroyers. If they go flat broadside, well you're just going to do overpen damage. It's not like a minotaur in that case. Improved pen angles will help while they're angled, but even still you can see how we're getting a lot of bounces here and really not a lot of damage. Fortunately we do manage to avoid the torps, no hydro here unfortunately. Uh, but our radar is just about to run out, and we didn't actually manage to kill that DD, which is a little disappointing. That's where that utility that uh, Worcester provides, uh, having a Hydro, having HE, is going to help a lot. Uh, but our Minotaur does manage to finish him off, and I think we got a decent hit in there right at the end. I do get spotted here, and that's the reason I'm torping that gap towards the decap there. That's the idea that the only way I'm spotted is through that channel. And if that's the case, why don't we torp it? Maybe we're going to land some torps on whatever's spawning us. Maybe, maybe not. It's not always going to happen, but may as well. These torps come back reasonably quickly. And I don't think we're going to have need for them anytime soon. It's uh, really nice to have torps, I gotta say. That's something the Worcester doesn't have. And that's really the direct competitor here, right? It looks like a Worcester very similar in style. That's why I'm comparing it to it. Uh, having a radar, light cruiser, that kind of thing makes a lot of sense. Um, and I honestly do enjoy this ship a little bit more, I think. Having that extra bit of healing is just so nice. And having torps to dev strike crew uh, destroyers <laughs> is also really, really nice. And just like that, we've, uh, well, helped defend this decap. And we see the Venice pushing out. His fuel smoke kind of gives him away there. And unfortunately, we shatter there. Don't quite have the angle, but... Yep, that's six citadels. <laughs> that, that AP is very, very good at closer ranges. Even against heavy cruisers. Light cruisers, you're going to do great things out even past 10 kilometers into citadels there. But against heavier cruisers, you do have to be closer. But at that range, if we're getting enough broadside, yeah, we can citadel even heavy cruisers with this ship. Which is just amazing. 
And we're defending this decap reasonably well. Unfortunately, the Minotaur does go down. And at least now we do have a little bit of spawning here thanks to the Destroyer coming back on our team. So hopefully we can kill this Kremlin before he comes around the corner. I'm getting a little greedy here. I should probably be moving forwards, trying to look towards getting into the sea cap, moving around the corner, not just sitting in front of a Kremlin at seven kilometers. Typically, that's not what you want to do in a light cruiser, right? I think that's pretty basic, but understandable. And I probably should have been also using these combat instructions a little earlier. They do affect our heal cooldown. And given we're sitting in front of a Kremlin, we're going to need that heal soon. Take a huge hit. Definitely a Citadel in there. But look at how much we can still heal back. It's still a full heal. It's not like the Citadel has even impacted our ability to get a full heal yet. And if I had been a little sooner on these combat instructions, we've been healing even quicker. And just like that, we can sit in front of a Kremlin and feel relatively okay. As long as he doesn't one-shot us, we're fine. That's uh, that's kind of the crazy thing here. And we're going to try and farm our buff up here on this Kremlin or on the Zhao. But I do need to start worrying about this Zhao. It's possible he's turning and getting ready for me. Maybe he's got Torps, so do you want to be ready for that? We're going to take another hit from the Kremlin, and that's okay. As long as we're angled, it'll hurt, but not too bad. 16k there, easy peasy. We have our heal coming soon, assuming we get our combat instructions up. And we're around the island. The Kremlin can't hurt us anymore. Just like that, the Zhao does go down. And unfortunately, we don't actually get our combat instructions. So now we got to be careful. That's the weak side of this heal. If you don't gain these combat instructions, the heal takes forever. we got to wait a whole two minutes for this heal to come back. And we're going to have to play a little safe around islands. Fortunately, the arcs allow us to play over islands and uh, maybe get our combat instructions back. But we can't play quite as aggressive now, unfortunately. I think that is maybe the downside of this line. If you're not as good at the game, I think it's going to be very difficult to use this line considering the downtime between consumables, especially the heal. A good player will farm up this buff, this uh, combat instructions, very consistently and make good use of it. And it's very, very strong when you do that and are able to do that. But anytime you're not able to farm up these combat instructions and use them on this heal, and you get yourself into trouble because light cruisers are gonna get themselves into trouble. It's just kind of what happens when you don't have too much armor. Uh, it's gonna be tough to play. So keep that in mind. Uh, maybe something they could do to adjust this line a little bit is maybe reduce the cooldown on the consumables and make the impact of the combat instructions a little bit less. 80% is pretty extreme. Um, there's that armor piercing again. <laughs> It's so satisfying, man. It's so satisfying. It doesn't have to be a battleship. Anytime we're doing Citadel damage, it feels so good. 171,000 damage there, getting a Dreadnought, of course, in this thing. Three kills, defending that gap pretty well. They did sneak through eventually, but we did a pretty good job, I think. As for the build here, we do want to buff our survivability and our guns as much as possible. So running reload, running concealment, propulsion mod is excellent when we're playing around islands like this it allows us to maneuver a lot more efficiently and uh, maybe even dodge some shells here and there aiming systems of course even with this the dispersion can feel a little awkward at times but we do reload relatively quickly so it's fine engine room protection pretty nice when you're potentially taking huge hits from a battleship over and over and then healing it back because this super heal is so extreme as for the commander here, this is what I was running in the video. Uh, someone wanted me to try out a full AA build. This was around the time that I was doing the Worcester one take or ship request that was the full AA build where, again, we didn't get any carriers. And again, with this game, full AA build, mostly. I mean, it's just on the commander, but uh, no carrier again. Uh, but what I would recommend as a build for this line that's a little bit better is probably something like this. I think you want the extra HP thanks to the extra healing you're going to get. We want extra consumables. We want concealment. And then top grade gunner. It's actually very easy to activate if you're playing very aggressively, which I think this line can support. Adrenaline Rush is always excellent. And then it's your pick for the last uh, one pointer. You could go double uh, incoming fire alert priority target to really know when people are after you. Or you could go consumables, which is actually only defensive fire that's kind of interesting with fish grease the gears they're pretty fast already so not necessary but uh 
there you go. That's kind of the idea. The first 20 points are pretty good. Uh, not sure about that last one. And that's going to be the San Martin again. I am playing this ship pretty often, and uh, that's no accident. This ship is very, very fun to play, and I'm having a great time with it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Definitely consider grinding out this line. It's uh, got a very good tier 10 at the end. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.